and the other thing that I'd like to touch on with you, because we've talked about this off off air, uh, is hope. That's a big thing for me. Is you know, I don't want to be part of a conference that's doom and gloom. And it's just like there's a couple of websites out there. If I went to those websites every day and read everything on those websites, I would literally go out on the back porch and just shoot myself. Sharpen Report. I am your host, Sam Johnston. Wait, you guys hear that? No, cut the music. Cut the music. You, you hear that? Do you hear the Watchmen? That's right. That's who we're talking with. We are talking with Mike and Jeannie from Hear the Watchmen. Uh, we're going to dive into uh, some of their background again, and we're going to talk about just what makes Hear the Watchmen so much different. Uh, I promise you it's going to be worth your while. It's not going to be an hour-long advertisement for Hear the Watchmen. We're going to talk about what really matters and the real purposes behind uh, Hear the Watchmen and ultimately coming together as a unified body to stand up against the darkness that we face on our world constantly. So... Mike and Jeannie, how are you doing today? We're great. We're, uh, to be honest with you, we're new parents. We, oh, yeah. uh, we have a little puppy that's yeah. wandering around the living room right now. And um, so if, we, if we're a little distracted, just know that we are uh, juggling our ministry with um, our adoption. <laughs> Might not have been the best time to adopt, but the dog was there. So, oh. you know, you got to strike while the iron's hot. But Sam, we really appreciate you having us on your show tonight and we appreciate all that you're doing to help spread the word uh through your show to all the listeners and viewers out there yeah well i uh i'm excited like i said the hear the watchman conference was life-changing for me so it's an honor to be able to uh offer you guys any assistance i can to try to uh, show people how life-changing this conference can actually be and how it can really affect a lot of things for the positive. Uh, and so, Mike, we had you on last time. We talked a lot about your background and your amazing testimony on where you came from, from coming, from being homeless to starting here, The Watchmen. And now we have the the blessing of having Jeannie on. So, Jeannie, I'd love just to hear where do you come from? What's your background? And how did you end up with a guy like Mike? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> so, Mike and I... Um, First of all, I was raised Catholic, and Mike and I were high school sweethearts. We um, we both happened to move to the same area at the same time. We were both new to the area, and um, we uh, we met in summer school. He went to my rival high school, but they merged summer schools, and we absolutely fell in love at 16, and um, we're together for two years. Then... Uh, then, you know, we, we had a little issue and he ended up breaking up with me, but we got back together in college for a year. And then I went to Spain and he thought I was breaking up with him, but I wasn't. It, it's a long, long story, <laughs> but I always like, he was my, lo- he was my first love. He was the love of my life. He was my, he, he just was my partner and I never got over him. So get a load of this, Sam. <laughs> 30 years later, um, now I'm married, divorced with two kids. I go to a block party at the top of the the street and I meet this woman who I hadn't met before. And and I said, you know, tell me, did you live in this neighborhood? She goes, no, no, I, I live nearby, but I'm here because I'm, I just moved to Colorado and I'm back to get the rest of my things. I just reunited with my high school sweetheart from 30 years ago. And all of a sudden all the, all the memories came back to me and I'm like, Oh my gosh. And she told me her story and I, I'm like, you know, getting all teary eyed and getting all, it was so sweet. So I go back home after this block party and I start Googling my high school sweethearts, last name, Kerr, first name, Mike, looking all over for him. Can't find him anywhere. Can't find him. I'm Googling, Googling till two in the morning. I'm Googling, can't find him. I'm like, Lord, is he dead? 
<laughs> or is he alive? Or just give me give me an idea. Now he was kind of a wild guy, you know. He he was a heavy, you know hardcore stockbroker. He trained with Dean Witter across the country and the world. He was a hot shot. Okay, I didn't know this, of course, because I hadn't seen him in thirty years. But I knew that he had the potential to do anything that he dreamt of. And in Mike's life, he tended to do things all out. And I tended to be the one saying, no, 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 really you in, really you in. And so that was kind of our dynamic when we were young. Well, lo and behold, can't find him, can't find him. I start praying, Lord, what is going on with Mike? Or where is he? Can you just give me a sign? Tell me if he's okay. Well, I waited three weeks. And I prayed every night because I couldn't get him off my mind. It's like that block party ruined me. Mm. And then lo and behold, I get up the next morning. It's been about 21 days. I go to my computer. I'm checking my email and I see an email from Mike Kerr. (laughs) And I literally, I'm not kidding, Sam, I fell out of my chair. I literally (laughs) fell to the ground because I was in shock. I'm like, oh, my God, God heard my prayers. Oh, my gosh. So I'm typing back, you know, the email said, are you the same genie more than went to Dana Hills High School in USC, that University of Southern California? And I emailed him back. Yes, I am. How are you? Where are you? I thought you were dead. That's what you said. I thought you were dead. And we we exchanged emails and and then had a phone conversation for like eight hours um, a couple days later. And then we decided that we just need to see each other. And we were both single. We were both divorced. We were both, you know, um, he was seeking me. Because I prayed, I believe, I believe that, you know, and, and his, his story is that he was kind of going through this period of time where he, he thought, you know, what, I gotta, I gotta make good on anyone I wronged and he kind of wronged me. So he was seeking me out to make good and to apologize but I was I sought him out because I never got over him and I just wanted to know, Lord, where, where is he? Where, you know, so we get together, uh, you know, our, after 30 years, we sit in my minivan and talk for five hours straight. And it's pretty much the rest is history. We, it, we just connected immediately. It was, it was just beautiful. And then we became a very strong couple in the Lord because he had, had just recovered from being down. He had recovered from being on top of the world and then being on the bottom. And, you know, through that process, he had struggled with um, addictions. He had back pain from an accident. And so, you know, the doctors will prescribe you painkillers and you have to deal with that. And he was, he had totally recovered from all that. And I'm like, wow, this is great, you know? He's, he's on the up again, and I'm, you know, just loving on him. Well, we did some really amazing things as a couple together, and um, he came um, to Orange County. We got married within a year, and we started, you know, living the life that we knew God wanted us to live, but with one foot in the door and one foot out, because we didn't understand being fully immersed in the Lord Jesus Christ. We weren't there yet. So we were kind of like Saddleback Church, you know, um, purpose-driven life. You know, we were, we were, I think I'm a Christian and I love God, but I just don't know how to get more fruit and more and get better fed. So I, long story short, I worked for a company, Christian-owned company, and I got turned on to True News, which turned me on to Steve Quill, which turned me on to the Hagmans. And so I'm immersed in this. Mike is, you know, he's immersed in Fox News and his job. I'm immersed in this alt stuff. And um, one day I came home from work and I said, I'm going to Montana to a conference and you can either join me or you can stay at home, but I'm going to Montana. And he said, well, where in Montana? I said, Bozeman. He said, Ooh, good fishing in Bozeman. So he wanted to go fishing, want nothing to do with a Jesus event. Right. 
and all these crazies, Steve Quayle and these crazies, you know, that I listened to. And the rest is history. We went to the conference. Um, he intended to go fishing, but he got fished. <laughs> and it changed our marriage, changed our life. We were on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we came back going, okay, now what? So I contact the conference organizer and I said, when's the next one? How can I help? I'm, I do this for a living. I'm, I do conferences, you know, people pay me to run their conferences. Can I help? I'll volunteer, do anything you want. I just want to be involved. Well, they, he had been, he had gone through his own personal trials and had his own issues that he was dealing with and had nothing, wanted nothing to do with another conference. So Mike and I were like, Oh, now what? Like we're, we're hungry to, to make something happen. It's our nature, you know? So, so I had these amazing downloads from the Lord and Mike had this vivid dream and we ended up thinking that our first conference was going to be based solely on his dream, but God doesn't always give you a vision and doesn't always give you a download for that moment in time. He, sometimes it's for the future, and it's about being patient and discerning and praying to God as to, you know, if you want me to do this, when's it going to open up? Things opened up for us to do a conference in Dallas and then later opened up to do the conference in the exact hotel with the exact floor plan with all the, I mean, it was just wild. The Riverside Hotel, he had a vivid vision of the Riverside Hotel and he said, I don't know where this hotel is, but it's got mountains. It's got people riding bikes along a river and it's two story. And he described, and he said, it's something about a chess set. So I'm madly Googling going, oh my God, this is from God because this is too vivid. And lo and behold, we find the hotel. It's in Boise, Idaho. We're in California. We'd never been to Idaho. We had no intentions of going to Idaho. We immediately booked a flight to Idaho to check this hotel out, thinking that we're supposed to do this hotel. None of the speakers wanted to go to Idaho in January, in Jan yeah. January or February or March, because it's not, no, it's just too cold. And we're like, okay, good. What am I, what are we supposed to do here? Well, lo and behold, um, and the, and the hotel mocked us and said, "Yo, oh, you're the couple from California, California dreaming. It's all about your dream. Like they were mocking us, Christian knuckleheads, right? So we do the conference in Dallas, Texas, because some of the speakers said, how about Dallas? And we said, okay. And I researched 27 hotels, found the, the one hotel that could do everything we wanted. And it was just God. It, everything just came together beautifully. We just got everything that we prayed for. And God just gave us the content, gave us the right people at the, at the right time. It was all God. It wasn't us. We're just, we just were willing. And that's the point. The point is, is that as Mike says, you know, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So if you are called because you are, you submit to the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, he will qualify you and he will make it happen as opposed to thinking, oh, well, am I called? Am I not called? Well, none of us are worthy truly of being called, but he qualifies those that are willing. And the point is, is that our conference is really about experiencing a breakthrough where you have the confidence to do what God intends for you to do, to get through your strongholds, to bind them in the name of Jesus and the, by the blood of Jesus, get to a place where you're walking in concert with Jesus, that you talk to him on a daily basis, that you get into his word, that you love him with all your heart. And Jesus performs. He gives you what you need to do what he intends for you to do, because we all were here for such a time as this. And if we're willing, there's a remnant and our conference is all about the remnant and building and fortifying the remnant body of Christ. And we know that it's not just our gray haired, you know, um, baby boomers that are the remnant. The remnant consists of ages from, you know, teenagers all the way up and the millennials 
are such an important part of this body because they are the future and they have a different mindset and they've been deceived in different ways. You know, we, we caught on to a lot of the things that the millennials don't understand, like, you know, witchcraft and Harry Potter and Star Trek. And we, our generation is like, oh, we get it now. We were so brainwashed and we get it now. The millennials, however, the millennials are so bright and so fast and so sharp and so open to understanding in a different way. And we really want to reach them. And Sam, you are a huge, huge part of that that promise that God has said, we need young people. We need college students. We need young working professionals who are going to be part of this army, this remnant body of Christ. And that is where we all come together because what God told me was no divisiveness and no strife bring and my, and, God told Mike, bring my people together. Gather my people. That's yeah. the only message that that I got uh, really through this dream that I had, Sam, was just these words that were crystal clear, gather my people. And so we set off to do that. And, you know, we we have talked on your show uh, about my past, homeless, you know, first highly successful, then lost everything, homeless in jail, saved on the floor of a jail room cell, uh, doing Bible studies with gangbangers. Uh, so when we say that God, you know, qualifies the call, uh, he certainly does, because when he got to it had to be the end of his Rolodex when he called me up and said, gather my people, everybody else must have had. An, uh, another appointment or something like that. Uh, but we've just kind of pushed along and tried to create a a, a variety of views at Hear the Watchman. It's not all pre-trib at Hear the Watchman. It's not, you know, it's, it's a, L.A. Marzulli puts it best. He says, you know, the one thing that's really great about Hear the Watchman is it's a mixed bag. And that way, you know, people come to the conference and they hear different views and it makes them think. But it's all biblical. So all biblical. everyone goes back to the Bible. This is very important for people to understand who don't have never been to a Hear the Watchman conference that we really rely on the Bible as a literal word of God. And there are different. We are we we believe that things are being unsealed for us to discover in this in such a time as this. And we, the remnant body of Christ, are to activate and we are to occupy before he comes. And it doesn't matter what you believe in terms of when he's coming. What matters is, is that you have the hope that you know he's coming and that evil will not, that Satan will not succeed that we have been given through the blood of Christ authority to, to, to take care of any evil and to stamp it out and to rebuke it and to walk on scorpions, you know, the whole thing we need to be empowered. And the conference really is about coming and understanding that you're not alone that there is a body that will support you. I mean, I love that you're you're working with Steve, Steve um, Menken. 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 You know, he came to Menken. hear the Watchmen, and he started this amazing ministry. And you know, we don't care. We don't. We we're not. We're here to empower. We're here to embody what what Christ did. And what did Christ do? He took 12 disciples, multiplied them to 72, goes around all over the world. We're not to sit as spectators in a church listening to a priest or a pastor on a pulpit and who's going to preach, you know, whatever his denominational doctrine dictates. What Jesus did is say, no. Be bold. 
I am empowering you. And we want to see miracles. And we see miracles at Hear the Watchmen. We have people being healed. We have people being uh, delivered from, from satanic cults and from years and years of sexual abuse and being delivered from pain and sin. And we, we have fellowship and love and support. And all we want to do is embolden you to do what you know God has intended for you to do when you are walking with him. And that's all the conference is. But it's not a prophecy conference per se. It's really it's really a conference that is designed to give you the tools, the intel, the fellowship, and the strength, and to see the testimonies of others in the room being completely who, who, the, and their lives being changed, knowing that the word of God is powerful. God loves us. He forgives us and he wants us to sin no more and walk with him. And that's really what it's about. Yeah, that's a lot of things that, that millennials deal with is that lack of family. That's uh, that's a background that I have is, is a painful family background. The divorce rates are kind of through the roof. Uh, and a lot of millennials come from come from that place where they should feel loved and they should feel unified and then they're kind of out in the world and they don't know where to turn to. Uh, and that's something that I really noticed about Hey The Watchman Conference is that very family atmosphere of loving each other and supporting each other and just talking about ideas. Uh, and I think, it, I think that picture comes from you know a couple you know a husband and wife doing this together to to build this conference so i i i would i want to go in more into detail about who the watchman in a second but i really want to kind of focus on your marriage and think what are some I guess, what are some highlights of your marriage and, and what are some lessons that you've learned through creating here the watchman that have helped you in your marriage uh that if i just if I just do it the way Jeannie says to do it, it works out much better. <laughs> <laughs> That's not altogether true. Uh, no, okay? it's, he's, it's, he's exaggerating. It's been, uh, you we, know. we have different gifts, and it's recognizing the fact that as a couple, God cleaved you, okay? And God gave one of you certain strengths and the other one other strengths. And it's really about my honoring Mike's amazing ability to to speak out to he's a public speaker he's an amazing um show host he's a great marketer he loves the lord he's he's a tough guy you know i'm a i'm just a blabbering (laughs) emotional woman with a heart okay and so is my dog that's just yeah. whining right now. So we, the dog's we, like, preach it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we got the Marlboro man with, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what you call me, but I, but we have a different perspective, but we respect and love each other so much and know that the people that come to this event, um, have a, you know, somewhere in between what Mike and I are, As a couple, um, we know that people have different perspectives. And, you know, what I love about Mike is he can he can transform what he sees in the world to what Jesus wants for us. And he's much more comfortable in that. I'm not even comfortable in the world anymore. So I'm much more um, interested in. The spiritual side, he's much more in, interested in the pragmatic side, but you need both because you can be spiritual and, and crawl in a ball in a fetal position and just love the Lord and pray, or you can be pragmatic and do the work, or you can be both. And that's really what Here the Watchman is about is getting people to activate, getting people to be active in their community, geopolitically, um, so socioeconomically. I mean, if you don't have any money, you can't preach because you're so busy just trying to pay your bills that you're completely consumed. So we need, we need to, um, we need to empower one another to be successful, but do it in such a way where God blesses us and that he endorses what we do. And that he 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 believes in us. I mean, you you have this show, you're you're running on faith, Sam. I mean, it's huge to do that. And and I know that it's it's we have our ups and downs, 
in our marriage, let me just say that we've had an amazing marriage. It's been very, very um, passionate, not sexually necessarily. I don't mean it in that way, but just we are very committed to whatever we get involved with. But we also are attacked continually because once you get on the front line, you're going to get attacked. So that's every more reason why you have to build your spiritual armor, why you have to, you know, get out of all sin, why you, why you have to learn technologies and prayers and techniques, and you need to have support with other brethren that are on the same page as you are, because most people don't get it. I mean, my family, my, my biological family, they really don't want to have a lot to do with me because I represent conviction to them and not everyone's ready to go there. And what here, the watchman is, is an immersive weekend where if you're ready to just hear the truth, cause it will set you free, be open to fellowship with people that will just bless you and encourage you and have a great time and even have the opportunity to to be water baptized again to rededicate yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is so incredibly powerful. Um, it's amazing. And I can't tell you how many people have contacted us and said, I'm single. Are you going to have an event for singles? We don't know how we're going to do that, but we do encourage people who are single that are looking for someone that is awake, you know, to, to, to come not for that reason, but to be open-minded to know that you're going to meet some amazing people that get you and that will pray for you. And I mean, the speakers are not separate from the attendees here. The watchman is a body of Christ. Okay. It's a working body and every single person can choose to be activated or, or, or kind of be observant but most conferences, you know, you're a spectator and you're watching someone on stage and you take your notes and you go home and you either apply those notes or you don't. Here, the watchman is, is potentially immersive. If you have a stronghold that's binding you, if you have something that is, that you can't figure it out, maybe there's, you know, Freemasonry in your background and you, from generations from your great grandfather and something is holding you back from just totally being peaceful, totally getting rid of sin, totally getting freed to be in, in, in concert with Jesus every minute of every day. You'll break through that at this conference because these concepts come out in the open and then we have deliverance, we have prayer and we have altar calls and, you know, you can choose to participate at any level you want. So it's for baby Christians. It's for advanced Christians. It's for non-Christians that just want to check out what the Christians are doing. It's for millennials, high school kids, and, you know, gray baby, hairs. and baby boomer gray hairs like us. So <laughs> there's no, God doesn't view us by our age. He doesn't, he, what he views us is by our heart and our willingness to do his work and to follow him and to love him and to have a relationship with him. So if there's anything that people that we pray uh, at every conference that people walk away with is, wow, I just feel I'm so connected to Jesus now. And I just want to please him. And I want to be with him. And I want to, I want to be with, I want to continue staying in contact with amazing people I met that are supportive of that walk and that don't discourage it, but rather support it and pray with me. I mean, prayer groups have been blossomed all over the country and the world for that matter. Um, people are starting their own ministries. They're start, some people have done their own small conferences and some people are doing ra new radio shows, which is amazing. Like it, it's it's um. Well, ten years ago, that wasn't there. No, yeah. but it's it's a it's an igniter. That's what here the Watchman is. It will ignite you, and you can get ignited and excited, and you'll get tools to better your life for the kingdom. You'll you'll understand the supernatural much better than you do now. 
And these amazing scholars, pastors, and and uh, speakers have dedicated their life to helping you grow by help giving you the understanding that you need to walk with Jesus Christ. And I want to interject, Sam. You know, if there's couples out there where the husband's not quite awake yet or the wife's not quite awake yet, I encourage you to bring your spouse to the conference because look what happened to me at the Whitestone Conference. I mean, uh, and that's happened over and over again. I mean, we have a uh, a guy from London bringing his wife uh, this year and it'll be her first conference. Um, and it, it's just, it tends to bring you together as a husband and wife. And, you know, remember I went specifically to go fishing. I did not go to that first conference to hear a single speaker. Um, and I'm going to get the puppy. I'm sorry. I we have a puppy. Do, I didn't do any <laughs> fishing. I mean, I, you know, I mean, and so, and, and the other thing that I'd like to touch on with you, because we've talked about this off, off air, uh, is hope. That's a big thing for me is, you know, I don't want to be a part of a conference that's doom and gloom. And it's just like there's a couple of websites out there. If I went to those websites every day and read everything on those websites, I would literally go out on the back porch and just shoot myself. I mean, <laughs> it's just the end of the world. It's here. It's this. The economy is going to fall. You know, I mean, there's going to be an earthquake. There's, the, I mean, it's just like too much. And so I try to bring that hope. Uh, to the conferences with the various speakers and and uh, the fellowship. The fellowship to me, people ask me like, what's what's one of the uh, best moments that you have at the conferences? And uh, to be honest with you, it's when I'm in the back of the room during the break and I hear the roar of people fellowshipping. It's when we're at the speakers dinner uh, and I see all the speakers fellowshipping with one another or the speakers lunch when everybody's having lunch with the speakers and they're all just talking and fellowshipping and exchanging ideas. And that's where the hope comes from is when you communicate with another brother or sister. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. It's something that I really uh, loved when I was there. Again, it's just being able to, to be involved and be immersed in people that believe similar things uh and there's a new aspect coming to this year's conference which i think is really fascinating as you guys are having workshops what's that all about well we are realizing that you know it's one thing to attend an event and learn concepts but if you can't put those concepts into action without give, being leaving with with specific tools um I think that we're all at a disadvantage. And because our our goal is worship, revival, restoration, in order to have a true revival, you have to be um, in a place where you can utilize the gifts that God gives you. And so we will be doing some, we'll do one segment of concurrent workshops. Everything else is one event at a time in one main room, because that's our format. We believe in that format, but we also believe that we want to have one period of time where people can kind of make a choice. Okay. Do I want to go to A, B, C, or D? So we're going to be doing something on spiritual warfare. We're going to be doing something on, on prepping. We're going to be doing some just exciting hands-on practical workshops because, oh, and we have Dr. Dr. Colbert, Mary Colbert's husband, who's an amazing doctor, Rick Wiles, doctor, Mark Taylor's doctor, but he's a holistic medicinal guru. And he is going to speak about your health and, and how to fortify your body, because let's face it. If you're not feeling good, it's really hard to, to, to do, to, to further the kingdom. I mean, we want people to go out in their communities. We want people to be activated. And so you have to be healthy and feel good and feel uplifted. And it's body, mind, spirit combined that, that is necessary. So we're going to get into the health aspect of, um, how important it is for the body of Christ to take care of themselves and to, and I'm personally, 
and Mike too, um, we're going to be going on a special Dr. Colbert program starting in a few days when, when it comes in the mail. And um, hopefully you're going to see a change in us, um, less stress. You'll and- think I'm a millennial by the time <laughs> I get done <laughs> Oh, it's, a, it's a miracle thing. Okay, I see how it is. Yeah, no, no. It's just, but you know, it's all about it's all about health. It's well, but it's it's important, you know, for people to realize that you 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 need to be spiritually right, but you also need to be physically right. And when you know, we went through this time where the prepper movement was just so pre- prevalent, and it was all, oh, get get canned food, get more ammo, get, the, get you know, buy more of this, more of this, more of this. And it's one thing to be—I mean, we can never be prepared enough for whatever we're going to have to go through, but you know, you have to prepare. Uh, spiritually. Sorry about the puppy in, the in order <laughs> to be able to 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 do it and make it work. You know, I mean, it it just and that's what we try to offer at here, the Watchman. Yeah, well, guys, hey, I really appreciate you coming on the show and having your puppy scream in the background the whole time. Uh, no, it, it's been it's been great. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Anytime you need a puppy screamer. <laughs> Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> I, I might just hire a dog to scream in the background of all my shows. Um, no, but I uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I'm looking forward to being there in March. Uh, where can people find you? Where can they support you? Where can they get constant updates about Hear the Watchman? They can go to hearthewatchmanmen.com. That's our website. All the information is there. You can Google Hear the Watchman YouTube, uh, and the actual name of the channel is Hear the Watchman Journey. You'll see interviews with like yourself and like uh, other speakers that will be there. Uh, it's just a great way to stay in touch with uh, what's going on. And then I also want to encourage all of you to go to the sharpeningreport.com. Uh, Sam has initiated a Millennials Matter campaign where we're trying to raise some money to help uh, young people who can't afford to, you know, get a hotel room or maybe can't afford the gas to get there, to get them out there uh, so that they can become engaged and then go back out into their own communities and spread the word. So here at the watchman, M-E-N.com. Yeah, well, guys, hey, do it. It's important uh, to get out there and be a part of that fellowship. I, I know I hear you guys' comments on the videos is, hey, I, when are small groups happening? Uh, do you know anyone in my area? Hey, I feel really alone. My family just doesn't get it. Listen, this is an answer to those prayers as a conference like this. So uh, I, I strongly urge you to get you guys get out there. Uh, I'll be out there. I'll be walking around and I don't, I don't know, my th- you know, a couple listeners will love that, I guess. But no, um, there's a lot of people that you'll be engaged with. A lot of the people we interview on this channel will be there. Uh, so the people you look up to, you'll be able to have uh, face-to-face conversations with, which is awesome. Not a lot of other conferences are able to do that. So that's really great. Uh, thanks again, guys, for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Sam. And keep up the great work. Yeah. We're so God proud bless of you. you for all you're doing. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. All right, guys. Hey, that's the show for this weekend. It was a little bit shorter than normal, uh, but that's okay. I, I didn't want to drag something way out that didn't need to be. Um, so, yeah. So, guys, it's only like 60 days away. Not even. So, I look forward to seeing you out there. Uh, keep up. Keep fighting the good fight. Keep doing the good work. And have a great week. Yeah.